So we're told that f of x is equal to x sine of x. We want to find the Taylor series from 0 to 5 when our a is 0. And then the second part, we're going to find a reasonable upper bound for when the absolute value of x is less than 1, less than or equal to. So first thing is Taylor series. So let's find the derivatives and calculate them at 0. So first let's do x 1 minus cosine x. So these are our zeroth through fifth derivatives of x minus sine of x. First is 1 minus cosine x. Then this becomes 0, so you just have minus cosine x. So it's sine x. It's derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of negative sine is cosine, negative cosine. So now we want this in a different color because I want to. So our function at when x, when a is 0, is equal to 0 minus sine of 0, which is 0 minus 0, so it's 0, OK? The first derivative at 0 is equal to 1 minus cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so you have 1 minus 1. That's also 0. One rule. Second derivative at zero. We have sine of zero, which is zero. And then our third derivative is cosine of zero, which is one. Fourth is negative sine of zero, which is Sine of 0 is 0, negative 0, that's 0. And then our fifth derivative at 0 is negative cosine of 0. Cosine of 0, as we said before, was 1, so now we have negative 1. OK? So we're going to set up our Taylor polynomial our series from n equals 0 to 5 of our function, the nth derivative at a, which is 0, over n factorial times x minus 0, so just x to the nth power. Okay. So that's equal to, we have 0 over 0 factorial times x to the 0 plus 0 over 1 factorial times x to the first plus 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus 1 over 4 factorial, just getting 0 over 4 factorial times x to the fourth and then negative 1 over 5 factorial times x to the fifth. So. 0 times this, 0, 0, 0, and this is 0. So we're just left with x cubed over 3 factorial minus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Excellent. OK, so now we want to find, call this a. So now we want to find a reasonable upper bound. 
And to do that, we want to write this equation in terms of f to the n plus 1th derivative. So I can just be like, oh, any one of these, what's the commonality? It's either going to be 1 or negative 1 whenever it's going to show up in this polynomial. Um, so in our series, actually. So we have our f to the n plus 1 at 0 is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay. So now we want to find use some c, and that c is going to be between, be between x and 0. So we can say that f to the n plus 1 at c, if we take the absolute value of that, that will be less than or equal to 1. Because if you take the absolute value of this, you have 1. And since it's somewhere between x and 0, it's got to be less than that, or possibly equal to. OK. So now. Mm, I can write it down here, I guess. Oh, so now we also want to, uh, we'll come back to that. Actually, we'll, we'll write it right here. So our equation for error, for n of 0 is equal to the absolute value of r to the n, which is equal to, yeah, that's what I thought, f to the n plus 1 at c over n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1. Okay. So this. As we said, this part here, f to the n plus 1 of c, is less than or equal to 1. So we can say that this is 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And this is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 factorial times x, the absolute value of x to the n plus 1. All right, so now suppose our absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. All right, so now I'm going to say that that's less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so now we're asked what it would be when our n is 5. So if we said, I can write that actually right here. If we're looking for n at 5, x of 0. That's less than or equal to 1 over 5 plus 1 is 6, so 1 over 6 factorial. And that's your answer for b.